what's going down, man? <laughs> Not too much. It's just doing dumb dances from when the show starts. <laughs> man, that's the way to do it. Oh, that's right, man. Heck yeah, man. What's up? Man, not a whole lot, man. I ain't been doing much of nothing. I've been enjoying it, but just not not much to talk about. <laughs> man, it's got to that point of the summer of Olympics that as much as I love it, it gets to the point of like, is this ever gonna end? <laughs> they do. They do just keep on a rolling. Um somebody posted some junk the other day. It wasn't junk, it was positive, but it was about how um I can't remember exactly. It was basically the last three times Kevin Durant's played in a gold medal game, he's gone crazy. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that's awesome, man. So I just because the whole thing is I have not kept up with nothing, including basketball, which I said I was going to follow. But I am glad the boys rallied because it was just my thing is, and you know it's going to be this way because this is, these are the new Jordan rules. Mm-hmm. When you lose, it's the coach. When you win, it's anybody but the coach. So I didn't hear all that crap about Greg Popovich. You know, he's past it. He's awful. He's done. You know, he gets one of those gold medals, too. But I'm, yeah. I'm happy for him. I'm really glad they rallied and got their stuff together, mainly because the Team USA was such a punchline, not when the Olympics started, but beforehand. There was just yeah. all this junk talk, and it's like basketball, the planet of basketball has gotten a lot smaller. So it's like, well, Team USA just doesn't dominate like they used to. You can say it that way if you want to. The fact of the matter is that a lot of places have closed the gap. Cool. There's basketball talent coming from everywhere. And a lot of those guys, it's not even that they play together internationally. They don't. I mean, it's usually, it's still kind of spread out because the best of the best of the best is going to be all over the place. But, excuse me, what is undeniable about the international talent They don't all necessarily play together, but when they do put on the shirt for the international team, uh, they'll tell you, the guys guys from here, the NBA guys will tell you, they've never seen that guy before because international sports are such a big deal to anybody that's not from here. Because here, we just, you know, we basically, if we win, oh, it's a punchline. And if we lose, I didn't care. So it's like, yeah, they're going to play you harder, man. That actually means something. So I'm very, very proud the guys rallied and won. That's cool, man. And good for KD because, I don't know, I thought for the bulk of last year, I just can't believe the Nets got the pass they got. I cannot believe you can put those three guys together and people won't come out and tell you it's not like this is created pressure. It's true. The Nets not winning the championship last year is one of the biggest meltdowns that you will ever see, and nobody said that. All we're saying now is, wow, the Bucks championship is meaningless because c- of all the injuries. There's injuries every fucking year, man. I'm, I'm sorry. It's the same thing. As, and basically, to be blunt, it's a lot of fucking Laker fans who got all huffy because, well, people are making fun of us for winning a COVID championship, and I'm with them on that. It's a championship. Y'all, can, y'all are just mad that LeBron won. Simple as that, because I guarantee you if Jimmy Butler, who I love, I ain't picking on him, but if Jimmy Butler and God knows Tyler Hero had won, no one would talk about bubble championship, COVID championship. You're mad, A, because the Lakers won, B, because LeBron got another one. So, C, you have to pack that excuse in there. And now, Laker Nation is huge, so now you want to talk a bunch of junk about Giannis. It's crap. It's crap, man. I enjoyed watching the Lakers win. I enjoyed watching the Bucks win. Just y'all just enjoy pecking each other's eyes out, man. But that crap, just the constant. It was there was a, I don't think it was a tweet. It was something I saw on Instagram about that, and it was it started actually, um, with Steph Curry, and it was like Steph Curry's never won a Finals MVP. LeBron needs all this help. COVID championship. Giannis is soft. Lottie died. It's like, man, y'all can come up with hella excuses to downplay greatness when it's right here in front of you, man. And I'm like, I'm with you, dude. It's like, this has been very enjoyable, and I'm I'm going to continue to enjoy it. Yeah, man. I had, I had a good time watching everything that I took part of. And it, just, it does feel like, even though the closing ceremonies are, will be going on in just a few hours over there, and we'll get to watch it tomorrow night, it, it feels like they're they're trying to pack so much stuff into these last couple of days. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> For real. Give me a break, summer games. God. Good Lord, I need some time off. <laughs> it's hot in Tokyo, shit. <laughs> Stop. You too much, man. <laughs> I'm hoping, hoping that, you know, I don't know how it would work, but 
hopefully somewhere either you know now between now and the closing ceremonies or right after the closing ceremonies some of our olympians will be able to squeeze out a little recreation down in rapungi <laughs> <laughs> get it down get it in i like the idea of sexual borrow covering the olympics that would be yes. awesome <laughs> All the COVID restrictions will not stop tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting my SCN. <laughs> That's just how it has to be. <clears throat> yes. The German women's gymnastics team has opted for an outfit that is less objectifiable. What's up with that? <laughs> yes. Get <laughs> your sexual morrow being upset about that. <laughs> Pull crap. <laughs> One of, one of the things I've done uh, since the last time we got is I got to sit down and talk because I have got caught up on some of the uh, Marvel offerings. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've, I've completed Loki. Nice. And uh, it's, it's one of those shows, man. I, I, I can definitely understand. Uh, it would, I, I, I wanted the time travel buddy cop show and makes it very clear to you very quickly this is not what you're going to get so it's like oh Aww. but, <laughs> it, but I, I i definitely can see there's a lot of people that i know that i'm just like yeah this is the one you're not going to like <laughs> but i I'm, it's not calling it bad i just it's just it's very very different and i think it's different in a really good way that's cool um I, th- I think one of the, the neat things about it is, man, any time that it's uh, Tom Hiddleston and uh, Owen Wilson on the screen, and you're really there. Because when people uh, see Owen Wilson, I mean, all they can think of is his wow, his wow, they're doing his wow thing. But, man, the thing that Owen Wilson does is he's one, he's one of the best whisper talkers. He does a lot of whisper talking, and I know you don't want to talk. I know you don't do that. If you like Owen Wilson, I know you don't do that. <laughs> so that, that's, that. There's a, a lot, a lot of whisper talking. A lot of he, he does really good whisper talking. He's a good whisper actor. He's really nice whisper. He's really piping me a lot. I like that. I dig that. I got my dig that. <laughs> but uh, it the I I did I liked the uh, female version of Loki way better than the internet told me I would. I thought that. Uh, character was really neat and I like even it was one of those kind of things even when it's going on like are they are they even going to address this in the show and leave it to the Owen Wilson character to be like oh man and you did it you you know you're gonna f- fall for your old self you sick <laughs> you know he didn't come out and say that but pretty much that's, that's the longest story because and he he was playing the audience in that moment. Like everybody knew, like, man, Loki's gonna meet this other version of Loki that's gonna be a girl. And he's gonna be like, well, hello. Hey now. <laughs> <laughs> what have we here? <laughs> it, it's 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 the old Seinfeld joke. It's like I I I found myself and I've come along and swept myself off my feet. Swept <laughs> myself off my feet. <laughs> oh, man, what was that line? I can't believe I don't remember it verbatim because it's one of my favorite that 70s show jokes ever, especially that wasn't a Red Foreman joke. But I think it was, I want to say it was when um, Jackie was basically Hyde and Kelso have given her this ultimatum that, hey, look, man, you can't play both sides anymore. You got to you got to pick one of us. So who is it? And so she comes back and tells him that what she's decided is this. I mean, the person I love the most is me. And I'm like, yeah. I mean, are you kidding me? And her line is something like, God, what is it that she says? Like, if I could run along the shore and embrace myself in a hug on the beach, I would. Yep. I love that joke. That is so <laughs> awesome. Is the middle image of you running down to get to yourself is too hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I love that so much, man. That's... That's pretty much the, the the best review I can come up of is that man, I I I, I dug I dug it a ton, and, but it, it is you know one of those kind of shows is it's really quick to kind of tell you like nah this isn't what you think it's gonna be, but um, it's it's definitely worth it's definitely worth the watch I think it's it's a dang good one I I, I dug it and 
it's 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 funky and it's weird, but I it, I think it's weird in a good way, and it it it, it, it pairs really well with the I uh, I went to an actual movie theater for the first time uh, in a long time and saw Black Widow, and Black Widow's the other one that it, it's. It's it's the normal thing. Anytime Marvel puts it out, everybody gets to be like, "Well, I'm gonna go and see what's wrong about it, so I can say this is finally the one that wasn't any good." I I found it to be total ba. I thought it was awesome and really good. Uh, what heard it was not coming out closer to Endgame, and uh, you know, if, if if it had come out closer to what not in the spider-man far from home was released next and i think that was scheduled but there being such a delay between end game spider-man wandavision captain america winter soldier i think it, it, w- it would have fit in a lot better before the uh marvel shows had started coming out but it just didn't work out that way and at, but at the same time, there's still plenty of it to like in the movie. But uh, definitely, uh, I, don't, I, I don't understand. You know, it's, it's been getting a lot of hate. But I'm like, whatever, y'all, y'all saw something completely different. And, uh, and I think what, uh, from the one character in particular I, I know of that people have been hating on it for is because apparently their taskmaster had this... A way bigger following than I realized. I'm like, y'all never cared for that t- character in the first place. Why, of, of of any of the characters that you're gonna stick in that movie, this it works. Plus, uh, it's a completely different character in in this universe. So, uh, too bad. It's 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 not. We 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 changed that one up. We're we're gonna we're gonna do that from yeah. time to time. I am. I haven't really heard many reviews one way or the other um, on, on Loki. I did, but I only ever heard positive shit about Loki. <clears throat> but to to your point on that, this is something I know we've discussed before, but it's one of the things that made me so happy about, and it really stinks now because you can't do it across the board, <clears throat> but we talked about for whatever the next wave is going to be. Whenever you bring in Benedict Cumberbatch, you are making it very clear that Doctor Strange is one of your plank characters, which is so awesome because it introduces magic. And as long as you want to keep Thor around, that's going to be great, too, because it just opens you up between like Guardians of the Galaxy and Captain Marvel and space stuff. And then you've got magic over here and then you've got magic over here. It opens you up to do pretty much any kind of story you want to. So that's what they're doing is just awesome excuse me like you said man anything you come up with to where one of the first impressions is oh man that wasn't at all what i thought it was going to be i'm I'm with that's exciting as hell i really like that and it's one of the things i like so much about i shouldn't say like so much about loki it's what i like so much about uh who they cast to play him because I'm not saying that you make that decision knowing that you can do it, but man, as soon as that first movie comes out and everybody, all of us love that guy as much as we do, there's nothing you can't do with that character going forward. So I, I love it. I think I'm really glad to hear that it was so good, man. And also I'm with you on, oh, I think Owen Wilson is one of the most underrated Hollywood guys there is. Cause I'm with you. I, I, I know he's hamstrung by his voice. Some people just are, and it's slight. But mm-hmm. the fact of the matter is, I, my thing with Owen Wilson is the crap that he's written. Like, all the stuff oh, that yeah. him and um, Wes Anderson co-wrote, it's like, man, go on, dude. And the fact yeah. that he wrote Wildcat, which <laughs> you and I both love, Wildcat and Old <laughs> Custer, two of our favorite books. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, I love that. Um, and it's one of the things I like so much about the deal Uh, with disney because they were never going to do that stuff with netflix because they wouldn't give that much of it away so with the with disney plus and with streaming and now with having the option to do television shows man that is so cool it's so so cool i like it yeah man if if it's if if there's one slide i could negative thing i can't say about uh the lucky shows it it, towards the end and uh in in a couple episodes there two, two or three scenes i can think of in particular that kind of get a little talky i thought 
This is just kind of sitting around talking. It's like, can't we just can, can, can we do something? <laughs> but uh, it, it it but it's not so bad that it's like oh man turn it off. You know it's it's nothing like that. But it it does kind of get to the point. Where I, this is a lot of just sitting around talking. <laughs> Get on with it. <laughs> I, I have yet to start Loki yet because I'm awful. I'm I want to. I'm excited to do it. I just haven't done it yet. <clears throat> also, this is going back a long ways. Sorry, at least six months because I've been sitting on the gift card since uh, since Christmas. I still haven't turned on my Hulu and watched my Hulu stuff, and that's crazy because the Hulu stuff that I'm in the middle of are the great, which I loved i don't know why in the world i have not just turned it on specifically to watch that but uh by the time i get back in there, i'm just going to watch it all over again anyway but i love that show and then rami was so good so those are my big two that i really it seems like there's a third one too but those were the two huge ones and then with disney plus it's loki and then again it's either loki twice or i might throw sam wilson in there I, we'll see but um but all that stuff is exciting. Trying to trying to plan it and map it out is quite exciting and quite fun. But I am mad at myself about Hulu. I can't believe I've done that yet. But God, there was something else in there I was going to mention, and I don't remember it for nothing. I'm sorry to say. Uh, but oh, on the subject though of Disney Plus, man, I am so happy to hear <clears throat> this is something. This goes way back. Conversation we had a long time ago. <laughs> that it is my belief that She Hulk a should be a TV show and b should be a at least half a legal style comedy right alongside the action movie stuff and i don't know how much of the legal stuff we'll get but at least the disney plus part is happening and that's uh, and it is like she hulk is gonna break the fourth wall deadpool style and it's like she sure is just like yeah. deadpool broke the fourth wall john byrne style i love it it's like of course she's going to that's great it's awesome. Wait till we get the crossover of the movie they're both in to where you have scenes of each one of them talking to the audience. That shit will be hilarious, man. Yeah. yeah. If, um, if, if, if there's one thing that the Black Widow movie did uh, make certain is that the character Natasha Romanoff is indeed dead. <laughs> so I was like, okay, fine. Good. But then I don't know if you heard this past week. Supposedly, uh, Scarlett Johansson has filed suit with Disney. He's like, oh, okay, well, that'll definitely make the character dead just as well. So, uh, but it's it 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 it, it t- it's going to take somebody that big to have done this. So I know there's a lot of people who probably wanted to do this uh, for a long time, like, but couldn't do it. They just don't have the name. So once Scarlet did it, then you heard about Emma Stone That's doing right. it and some other guys. Like, but uh, I, I hope it works out for them because I just got a feeling that Disney's one of those kind of companies that like they're so lawyered up. We could have it verbatim in the contract, and you could be able to prove verbatim <clears throat> we broke that contract. And they're going to be like, too bad. Yeah. <laughs> What you wind up doing, where you wind up in trouble, and this is the whole thing, especially with Avengers being the thing, is uh, until, if and until, which might be sooner than we think, uh, Disney goes back to just animation full time, you have SAG after on you. And don't get me wrong, the Scarlett Johansson's not going to win. Everybody knows Disney's going to win, but what you're going to have going forward is SAG after people getting the shit in print because literally i mean what the, basically as far as i know what the lawsuits over is them fucking them on their percentages because yeah. well um the streaming uh technically uh doesn't count okay does it affect uh, your fucking bonus because mm-hmm. if you get credit for streaming in your bonus that means it counts yeah. it's just like that's all they're trying to do but we've talked about that many times before and i will stand by it the reshuffling of the deck with the NFL draft and quarterbacks. You literally, in this country, I want you to think about organized labor in the United States. There are about four groups of people that use their collective bargaining to get fucking rich. And if the paying class has got you down to four groups, they're gonna eliminate those as quick as they can. So you wiped out quarterbacks, and now you're trying to wipe out actors. You already wiped out rock and roll stars. So it's like, this, it's all that shit is connected. Every bit of that is one hand washing the other. 
It's like that's ridiculous. But leave it, leave it to Disney, leave it to companies like that to. Well, technically, I mean, all in these unprecedented times, yeah, it weren't so unprecedented that you couldn't fuck people out of their royalties. That just makes perfect sense, and it's cool because ScarJo is made. I mean, she's absolutely fine, but you know, good on, good on her for being the one to bring the lawsuit that will help somebody down the road. Mm-hmm. That's, and Emma Stone too, man, because I, I, as far as I know, that's what it's about. Mm-hmm. The, <laughs> the press, the precedent hadn't been set to help me, but. It, it's it's kind of the way it was explained to me is uh the only reason why you uh a, a individual or company copyrights anything is to sue people and that's how because copyrights aren't free <laughs> and and, and, it, it, and this is just how it's the best way i know how to explain it this isn't necessarily a copyright issue but the fact of the matter is if precedent is set and you do not sue, then the, that precedent has said that, well, why didn't you sue this past time or whatever? But but point is, yeah, it may not help me, but in the future, there'll be somebody that can point to this and say like, well, now, now you got to fix it. That's yeah, what, I, what I'm trying to say. Yeah, because basically what winds up happening is the whole deal with like points and percentages and la dee and horse shit like that is you – get less of a guarantee because then you're factored in for X number percentage of whatever the fucking movie makes. So you fucked me when I signed the contract and now you're fucking me by saying, well, that doesn't go towards the bottom line. So we can't help you out. And it's all like, okay. But, and that's the whole deal is that going forward. Now, like you said, since the precedent has been set by a blindingly wealthy member of SAG AFTRA going forward, that is contract negotiations. And no, 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 no. You can pay the full line here. You know, and that's, because that's the deal. It's like, if this doesn't count, the whole reason you started doing that was to save money on guarantees. If you're not going to include streaming in perpetuity, okay, then you can go back to paying X number and that'll be fine. And eventually you're going to get back to where they were, where X number, basically, whatever comes between the dollar sign and the decimal point is more money than it would have cost you to factor them in and they'll go back to factoring them in. That's the whole, it's, and it's just like, it's not like, so it's exactly what you're talking about. It's not that, oh, they'll get them eventually. They're going to suck it to old Disney because the, no, I mean, this is just balance. That's how all of this crap works. And so <clears throat> just the next time you hear anybody talking about old school music companies, if you watch the documentaries like I do and they complain, man, they just rip those guys off. They just, they just fleece those guys. You're seeing it right now in front of your face. This is, well, well, it's just business. Yeah, it is. Business is we get to fuck you right up until we can't anymore. And then for a little while, it'll balance out. And then the second we get back on top, we'll fuck you again. And then you'll have to get back up. And that's, that's the dance, but I'm with you. Good on Scar Joe. Cause she's an A-lister and gotta, gotta listen to her, man. Yeah. That's what's up, man. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. And I hope she does good. I heard I've only, that's another one that, um, this is really only based off of people that I know that have seen it, but I've only heard good stuff about it, man. I heard that it was quite, quite enjoyable. And I'm like, that's cool, man. <laughs> Pardon me, good it, Lord. I think, I think it, it, it would have made a lot more sense uh, <laughs> coming closer to the end game just because it's, it's, it's definitely a nice break. That, that we needed after the heaviest stuff that went down in that one. Probably, I, I, I don't remember exactly how it fall, would have fallen on the timeline. I want to say you needed a break like that before you could start WandaVision. I, don't, I can't remember if it was scheduled to come out before that or not, uh, but it was around that time. And uh, it's, it's just a nice, and, and uh, Far From Home was too. It was kind of, it was had its toes in the waters enough of what was happening in Endgame to where it still felt like the events are being felt, but it wasn't beating you over the head with it. And cool. this one is just like, man, we're just going to take a break. Yeah, man, I can take a break. break. <laughs> I can take it. It's something that I think is interesting. <clears throat> this is fascinating. I don't know if this is, I can't help but think this was intentional. And it's brilliantly intentional because I've had this conversation with my friends who I think it was, it seems like they've done it since Endgame as well. But I know in order to get ready for Endgame, they went back through all of them. 
watched them all over again, and it seems to me like they've done it since Endgame. And uh, what I mean by as far as like intentional and just ingenious and stuff like that is that <clears throat> according to my friends that watched everything over again, it is brilliantly rewatchable and very, very, very enjoyable when you go back through it in that way. All jammed together, time off. It's, it's They just did such a good job with it. And I'm with you on like, I, I just I can't help but think that if it if it would have been cooler closer to end game man when you get to go back and watch it immediately afterwards that's great it'll it'll do nothing but help it and because that's what they were telling me about because you know God I've been on the banging on the fucking age of Ultron drums since that movie came out and that's what they were telling me then is like yeah if you watch them all together it's like it's different it's it's a lot it's a lot more fun if you watch them all sucked in there sucked in there together and I'm like cool that's good to hear man. <clears throat> So if people are seeing uh, Black Widow and not digging it, maybe a, in, watching it in that way will help them out a little bit. That'd be cool, man. And it's good. That's a good feature. I'm hoping that if, I think eventually um, I could see, I should say, eventually uh, Disney Plus um, marketing it that way. Because, man, hey, sign up for Disney Plus. Bam, they're all right here, man. You can rewatch them anytime you want to. And here's the order. <laughs> you know, it's like getting the official reading order list from Marvel. I love yeah. that. Now, I've got, I, and, um, oh, I used to have it. I don't think I do anymore now. Crap. Oh, yes, I don't. Shoot. Back in the day, I had all of the, like, New Avengers and, um, uh, what the heck was it, man? Mighty Avengers. I knew there was another one that went with it. And I had all of that stuff. Like, there was this great, chart of like this is the order to read them in so i sold them to somebody on ebay and i just sold them all together and i stuck that in there as a little bonus and i was like i've loved this forever i hope it helps you as well enjoy yeah. and it was so cool i love having a, the official read list because you know there's a lot like you said there's a lot of overlap and sometimes it's like wait a minute but whenever you read them it's like oh sweet okay <laughs> Makes a lot more sense now. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Like, oh, okay, yes. I would have read that in the wrong order, I can promise you. <laughs> Man, that's, that's, they, they, one of the, the neat things is uh, you have Loki that uh, definitely feels like it's the, the Disney Plus Marvel show that builds heavily towards the next movie coming out. If and you know, as far as the Doctor Strange uh, tie-ins go, Sweet. and I I thought it was really kind of neat where you have Black Widow, the most recent Marvel movie that has the cutscene at the end that builds heavily towards the possible next Disney Plus show. And I'm like, oh man, that was good. That's cool, that, man. That was good. So uh, I like how they're they're they're, want, they're wanting to say. Uh, the way they've been promoting stuff these days. So I'm like, man, keep it coming, brother. I love it. <laughs> it's it's quite quite enjoyable. I'm with you, man. It's uh, <clears throat> I do need to get I, – I got to watch Loki. I'm excited. But it's really – I'm just – I'm very happy. Not, I'm very happy by – I'm pleased by your review of it. Just because, like we said, man, it just – it puts you in a position where you can do such unusual and unique stuff. And, man, it's what they did with WandaVision. It's what you're telling me they did with Loki. I love it. It's that's so exciting, man. I just think that's the coolest thing. And then, like you said, the Doctor Strange movie is coming. I can't wait for that shit. That's going to be because uh, Doctor Strange, we talked about it. That movie was awesome. It was, and that's another one. Doctor Strange along the lines of Guardians of the Galaxy in absolutely no way content wise. But do you know anyone that didn't love those movies? Because I don't. Everybody loved those. And it's like, that's so cool, man. If if there's one kind of thing kind of bummerish, not not it's not spoilerish in the in the slightest. I don't do that. But uh, what I'm what I'm trying what I'm getting at is uh, the Do- Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Knowing that that title had been promoted long before we even knew there was going to be a Loki show, when it gets to the climactic uh, ending of Loki. You kind of know, like, yeah, I know what's going to happen. <laughs> so it's, but it's just kind of, I just going to, I guess I'm going to sit here and watch and see how I'll, I'll just confirm that, yeah, yeah, that, that's happening. So it, that's, that's the one, if there's one downside to the climactic uh, last 
fi- final episode of this season of Loki. Because uh, I, I do believe there'll be more that they basically c- come out and tell you that that's, that that's the case. Is that one's going to continue as the show. But that character will continue in the show. But uh, when it comes to the climactic final episode, you're like, yeah, they pretty much just told us how this is not going to end. <laughs> or going to end however you want to have if you want to spin it but like there's there when it's you, maybe there should have been a third option to try to make it a little bit more of a uh uh curveball but knowing the multiverse of madness co- is coming and the scenario that's presented to them kind of like yeah i know what's not gonna happen <laughs> but it's it's cool it goes back to the first avengers when homie turns around with the gigantic purple chin everyone knew exactly who it was going to be but it was still exciting it was totally yeah. okay man yeah it's all good <laughs> yeah i do totally man it's like uh anything that gets us closer to wanda putting mutants in the world i'm I'm excited because I'm oh, still yes. convinced that's where we're going, and I love it. Oh yeah, man! Oh yes, it's going down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're talking. I was watching an interview with Kenny Omega, and they got discussing. They brought up Green Lantern for some reason, and they were talking about the movie. And I was really hoping that I'm, it's not like it's a responsibility. It's not like anyone has to do it. But I was like, man, put Mark Strong over. He was so good. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's stupid, but I know we talk about it all the time, man. So was alive. <laughs> he was he was awesome. He was yeah. God, he was so awesome in that movie. I can't wait. I guess discussing multiverses like we've talked about, I just would that's exactly what I would do with DC. And see now, like we said, man, you need to go. You need to go because Marvel is definitely going to go there and they're gonna get there first. And then whenever you try and do anything, it'll be just you ripping them off, and that sucks, okay. but so what, man? I just yeah. I just think the idea of like we said, man, I love the idea of multiple Batman being on screen together. I think people would like that. Uh, I think um, my main thing with the multiverse is getting Sinestro back in there because he was so awesome. But like we said, man, the best idea to possibly come from that is, again, bring back, I'm going to say his name wrong, again, Michael Rosenblum or what? um, Rosenbaum. Rosenbaum, thank you. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Smallville's Lex Luthor. Yeah. Have a scene where Smallville's Lex Luthor murders Jesse Eisenberg's Lex, Lex Luthor. People would love that shit. Yeah. They would love it. Be cathartic for them. That was worth it. <laughs> it. Yeah, it would be crazy because it's like, shit. Is he just gonna go kill all the other versions of himself? Good lord! It's like this. Mm-hmm. That would be cool as hell. They can make that work. Yeah, man. Damn it, <laughs> <laughs> man. The the Mark Strong uh, scenario. It. Bricks, it, it, it brings up one of the things that I hate that happens. It's like, first of all, and, and, and I, it, you know, always, I, it sounds like I'm trying to blame the actor, and it's not necessarily the actor's fault because it ain't, hey, job's a job, take them all. But uh, I always hate when somebody plays a, at least a, a pretty significant character in one uh, universe of comic book movie, and then I feel like that's all you get to do, but I've I've branched out. Well, okay, you get to be one in DC, then one in Marvel, then the ultimate uh, crime is Mark Strong has already played two characters in DC. Like, well, crap, he's he was because uh, they they know they've got somebody good, but just you're gonna cast him as Sinestro, and then just a few years later, he's the bad guy in Shazam. So it's like. Man, you know you got something good. You just make the movie better. <laughs> That's what I'm yeah, trying to get at. I can dig it, man. But at the same time, I can't. I can't get too huffy because <laughs> whenever, as we've said, as I've said, man, I just the reveal, if you will, the return of Robert Downey, Chris Evans, Hugh Jackman, which I'm. I'm a thousand percent convinced that's going to happen. I don't give a damn if one of them dies between now and it coming back, but it's Disney. They'll green screen the fuck out of it. Yeah. That, that is, I'm convinced that's going to happen. Yeah. Um, 
But at the same time, I want it'd be so awesome if not just as Captain America, but you bring Chris Evans back as both the Marvel characters he played. Yeah. I'm cool with that because I know we talked about it, man, that as bad as, and I shouldn't say it that way because the, the Fantastic Four movies, the Jan Grufford, um, Jessica Alba, damn, her name just shot right out of my head, man. Mm-hmm. They are not unenjoyable they're really not yeah. they're, they're not yeah. great but they're they're fun and it's my favorite my favorite stanley cameo of all time wasn't a cameo he wasn't Stan Lee showing up and being oh that quirky old man he was oh i forgot willie um crap now i've got willie loman stuck in my head and that's the salesman i can't, willie lufkin i think is the name fantastic four very famously had the same postman for a thousand years it's it's something like that, but it's the fact that it was a character that him and Jack created as a cool little comedy aside, and then he got to play that character, and that shit is dope. That's the coolest yeah. thing. I love that. I can't believe I just sat here and forgot the name. I think it's really Lumpkin, I think. Anyway, uh, but the idea of seeing Chris Evans back in both those roles is fine with me because, like we've talked about, man, outside of the um, the Disney stuff, J.K. Simmons as uh, J. Jonah Jameson. <sighs> Chris Evans as Johnny Storm is on the short list of my like favorite interpretations of comic characters in the movies. As far as me thinking that, man, that's exactly what I think that character would be like. Shit's awesome. So I would like yeah. to see him back in both of them just because why the hell not? <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's good stuff. <laughs> yeah, man. man. That's pretty much long and short of all I know that's been going on. <laughs> um, we got another, like, huge wrestling to do to oh, discuss if you want oh, to. Yeah. It, it, oh, yeah. Let me, let me be blunt and say point blank. If you believe it. And yeah. I, I, I guess that I haven't really come across anyone that doesn't necessarily believe it, but we'll get there. And mm-hmm. I think, as far as I know, the only, like, well, there's two, actually. There's two massive monstrous things that have gone down that are not CM Punk or Brian Danielson. Yeah. Uh, we got to discuss Adam Cole. We got to discuss Bray Wyatt. Okay. All right, man. Who you want to start with? I, I think I think Bray is that's that's the one I heard about first. I think. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it was one of those kind of things when I heard about it. It's kind of like, I mean, how. How how did he how did it last this long? You know? I, I'm not even sure I believe that anything's happened. I'm telling you, that's the one that is yeah. like I'll believe it when he shows up somewhere else. But I just mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, I understand that whatever his name, Nick Khan is. I mean, I get it. I read something the other day that was talking about it. So look, all you have to take away from the Bray Wyatt situation is that Vince is selling up. That's it. And it was like, if it's true, if it's really happened. Yeah, I get it. Clear as many big contracts as you possibly can and uh, then sell up, ma- maximize your profits. It makes sense. I could see that being the case. I wish the fuck he would already. Now, it's uh, there's ridiculous. Oh, man, the devil you know. And I'm like, the shit could not be worse than what they're doing these days. And that's just based off hearsay because I won't even watch the fucking show as long as he's doing it. But if you got Triple H in the building. He can make that crap where he's proving it to you. Well, NXT's doing terrible now. Yeah, because that's the one that Vince is all hands-on all of a sudden. Because yeah. if y'all think Vince is running SmackDown, you're nuts. If you think that guy... Why is Fox going to give you $2 billion to then let you just do whatever the fuck you want? Are you, are you fucking kidding me? Get, get the hell out of here. No, he ain't got nothing to do with that shit. So, I just I hope that's what's going on. I hope that's what's going on, and I hope that Triple H gets the reins, because then... We can really start doing some really fun crossover fantasy booking. We can go. We can have a uh, Seth Rollins in the Chris Evans role. He can play both his parts and <laughs> yeah. just be great. Yeah. And, but uh, yeah, I, we'll see. I'm not even sure. I'm, I'm just not sure. I believe that that one's real. But I mean, if it is, and they want to, some I think it was the Chick Foley was. Yeah, man, you got to get him, and you got to get Braun, and you got to get Eric Rowan, and you got to have the Wyatt family just run roughshod over AEW. And I'm like, I don't want Braun Strowman anywhere near any television program I am watching. I just don't. Mm-hmm. Well, if they think he's a big deal, why'd they fire him? Will you and I covered that. Braun mm-hmm. Strowman went out and did that thing that stupid people do on social media 
when you are working under a contract. Because the second you put in print, oh, I don't work WWE, I'm going to retire from wrestling. The second you put that in print, do you really think you're going to get a attaboy for that? Do you really think that you've done so? Oh, man, he's so loyal. He's like the Undertaker. He, he's loyal to the company. How fucking long was it before Undertaker was cashing in $3,000 checks from StarCast? You know what I'm saying? It's like, that's not at all what you did. All you did there was just, you know, clipped your negotiation wings. Mm -hmm. That's what happens when you've got no union. Because some people just don't know, man, they love me. They're going to take care of me. No, the fuck they won't. And it's like yeah. the second he started talking that shit, you literally neutered your negotiating power. And that is why they fired him, was to get out from underneath the contract so they can hire him back for a fraction of what they were paying him. That's I, That's got to be what's going on there. Mm -hmm. Anyway... Um, Bray Wyatt going anywhere else would be great. Bray Wyatt going, what? Who? It, whatever. Like I said, I, I will believe that shit when I see it. But it just it feels a little fake. That yeah. one does. That one seems kind of kind of bogus to me. But we will see. And uh, I don't know. I, I that's a really boring way to tell that story. But I mean, I don't know. I, I just. I would not want to work there, but I wouldn't want to work there, period. And I damn sure wouldn't want to work there after you work that hard to create and create and create and create and once again get back over a character that these guys have squashed at every turn. And still, you make it the biggest merch seller in the fucking game again. It's like, why would you want to work with these people? I would. Yeah. You know? yeah. Just let me go. <laughs> That's where I'm at. It's like, ah, we're, we're good. We're, we're, yeah. we're good. Mm -hmm. Um, and then Adam Cole's the other one, and uh, yeah. that one I definitely believe is real. I'm quite certain because yeah. the thing is, the idea of Adam doing the extension to finish out the O'Reilly thing that that seems to me very in keeping with who you always hear Adam. Adam Cole's a great dude, man. He's just a mm -hmm. good dude, and that that's very very much sounds like something he would do. Yeah, I just you know, and this. Uh, that's that seems to be to just uh, what we're built towards. It's like, man, he's already just already out of there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I would be. I, I, it's weird to Booker T's. I thought Booker's comments on that were really fantastic. Where he's all like, he needs to stay put. You got to get as much out of this as you can get out of it right now. And you know, down the line, if you want to go to AEW, that'll always be there for you. And I'm like, man. That'll always be there for you. You mean like the reliable company that's going to be around? Come a long way from pissant t-shirt company, haven't they? Yeah. Now they're the fallback. Now they're the company. They're the one that'll always be around, but the iron's hot over here. It's like you and I talked about, man, and I wish somebody would come out and say it. The biggest issue with WWE right now and all of this flippant, flippant, excuse me, firing of people really doesn't have anything to do with your roster and it doesn't have anything to do with your NXT roster. What it's going to have an effect on is whoever, Seth Rollins, John Cena, Roman Reigns, Randy Orton, whoever your big stars that are either independent wrestlers right now that no one's ever heard of, or heaven forbid, not even in the business yet. It's going to be when you have to negotiate with those people. Because if you think Randy Orton is going to be wrestling when he's 80, good for you. But I think that's a terrible bet. Mm -hmm. You have no negotiating going forward, period. And there are going to be people that can make you a shit ton of money whose names you do not know right now. Whose names we don't know right now. Whoever's going, like we talked about, man. Short version. I, that's where they're screwing up. And I think it doesn't matter because... Vince, I know, was so bogged down in his own fucking bullshit that he knows he's going to be dead. He doesn't care. So yeah. it's like, I don't have to I don't have to worry about the company 10 years from now, man. I won't be here. And it's like, you and the company are not the same fucking thing. But that's, that's the issue. And ultimately, that's how you keep going. Because you just put trips in, out front. Because obviously, he knows how to work with young talent. He knows how to, it's weird, too. People are so funny about the, well, Triple H buried all these people. And Cody's just like him. I, how did Cody Rhodes get to be just like Triple H, by the way? I don't understand. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't understand that at all because he got massacred on TV by Luke Harper. He then got massacred on TV by Malachi Black, but for some reason he's the burial guy. I'm like, okay, I think you guys either. I really think what happened, like we've talked about, 
where the anti-Roman reign sentiment really got ramped up was twofold. It was either kids that grew up on John Cena and were just like, man, whoever the next guy is, I'm going to give them complete hell because they were mean to my guy when I loved my superhero. And it seemed like so much fun to just be the prick adult that booed the guy that you decided you would do that. Don't want to miss out. It's like, that's pathetic. But um, that one didn't work out so well because the second, you know, you get to a network where Vince doesn't get to tell you what to do anymore. And they're all like, I'm sorry, why again are we not portraying you as the baddest fucking guy in the room? Clearly, you're the best looking guy in the room. I think that you could probably Indiana Jones my heart out of my chest and eat it if you wanted to. Why don't we put you on TV as that guy? And that's exactly what they did. And lo and behold, Tribal Chief is a big, big deal. It's like, it, anyhow, that's ridiculous stuff. But he is ridiculous. And the sooner he sells the company, the better off everyone is going to be. I hope it's sooner rather than later. However, even sooner than Vince Son and the company, I really do hope that Adam Cole goes to AEW because, as I have said for a long, long time, talk to me all you like. Hook me up with your excitement about CM Punk, about Brian Danielson, about Miro, about um, Andrade, about <laughs> Alistair Black, whom I'm very excited about, too, especially those last two. Yeah. The one guy, all those people I just named, or anybody that you could name, the one guy that I'm hitting the pause button on on whatever my championship division is, is Adam Cole. And that's the whole, well, you know, they've taken Adam Page out of the world title circuit, and they're keeping it open. Uh, so you think CM Punk's going to win it? I'm like, Fuck no. They are going to negotiate to bring Adam Cole. And I'm not saying Cole gets the belt immediately, but I'm saying he gets up. That's what I would do. It's mm-hmm. exactly what I would do. Come on, man. He's baby. Yeah. That guy is fucking amazing. So I hope, very much hope, that he goes to the NXT show and burns the fucker down, which you know that's going to happen. Yeah. And then I would love it if he'd show up. I just He's so good. I would really, really dig that, man. And then I guess the last of us, I shouldn't say the last, there's always plenty of people I would love to see in uh, AEW, but um, I would love to see them bring Ricochet along. That shit would be so oh, yes. sweet. Oh, my God. And especially like we're talking about. You have Andrade, um, Aleister Black, and Ricochet in the same division. NXT already showed us how cool that could be. Adam Cole, too. Adam Cole, Ricochet for the North American title. It's one of the more famous matches in NXT history. It was unbelievable. So, by all means, if the main roster we see these guys called up to is the one in Tampa, I'll take it. I'm totally okay with that. Jacksonville. Sorry, Jacksonville. I'll take it. I have no problem. I'm only saying that because there's a big difference between the two. Oh, yeah. I, don't think ever, I don't think I've ever been to Tampa. I'm not trying to diss Tampa, but I like Jacksonville. That's a cool ass town, so I just want to make sure I put them over. <laughs> mm-hmm. Tampa, uh, probably outside of Atlanta, Georgia, could be considered the strip club capital of the Southeast. <laughs> I can dig it. I outside can dig it. Hot Atlanta. <laughs> That's all I know about Tampa. That's long as well. <laughs> I can dig it, man. Yeah. But they, oh, they are pretty. It's a pretty big, de- pretty big gap between the two. I mean, they're not exactly down the street from each other. Yeah, Florida's weird, man. I, because I mean, we talked about every state down here, man. It's, a, it's especially Georgia. Jesus Christ, you east to west Georgia, baby. You gonna you gonna be on the road a while. Georgia's big. It's it's much bigger than people think. Um, but Florida, obviously, there is no east to west. But hey, man, you're coming from Georgia. That means you have to hit the state line. That's the crappy thing about going anywhere in Florida if you're not flying. Is it all like, oh man, there's the sign, welcome to Florida, woohoo! And then man, you still got a long you ass ain't way there. To get where the hell are you trying to get to? <laughs> like, you yeah. ain't there yet, brother. <laughs> For real, man. <laughs> you just, you just get on, you just go and get comfy. <laughs> For real, man. Yeah, I got this shit. Way to go! <laughs> For real, man. You made it to Florida. That doesn't mean shit. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I um, I guess that was it. It seems like now that I brought it up, it seemed like there was something else wrestling related. But I don't guess there is. I'm guessing. I'm thinking those are the big two. And uh, um, yeah. Bray E W. I, I man, anywhere he wants to go is cool with me. I'm just not. I I don't know. It just that one just seems weird, especially with the Fox and USA Network are upset about Bray Wyatt's release. It just seems like. 
I, I don't know, man. It just would not surprise me a bit if all that shit was fake. For example, this sounds this is going to sound really stupid, but if you really, really want to do something weird, I mean weird, you bring John Cena back to feud with Roman Reigns for whatever reason, and I'm telling you, I know it's just because Vince and I are just very different in our view of what this stuff should be. The notion of John Cena beating Roman Reigns seems weird as shit to me. I don't I don't understand why anybody would book Roman Reigns to lose to anyone, especially John Cena. Yeah. But if you wanted to do something really interesting, real cool, have John come back, win the championship. Then you have Roman Reigns show up on SmackDown on Friday night. And he has the title and he's cutting promos, but the promos have nothing to do with John Cena. He goes back to talking about whatever the fuck he was talking about before. And no one acknowledges John Cena. That's the whole thing. He goes, oh my God, 17 time world champion. Oh my God. And then no one's talking about it. No one acknowledges it. You go to WWE.com and he's 16 times. Anywhere you go, it's just referenced to 16 and it's all like, just act like it never happened. Then you bring Bray Wyatt back. Because you'll remember The Fiend pretty much erased John Cena from history at WrestleMania. Then all of a sudden he comes back and we don't even acknowledge it. That shit would be so awesome to just mind fuck everybody right in front of their face. And it's all like, guys, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. What you? So then you go to WWE Network to pull up John Cena beating Roman Reigns and it ain't there. What would be even cooler, especially considering no one's going to be in the building, man, is film a second match that, Rain, that Reigns wins. I think if you could do something so, um, it sounds so dumb, but this is the bullshit they think of. This is what they try to come up with. That would be fucking amazing. If you if you are faking the entire Bray is fired thing to then just fuck with everybody, that sounds very Vince McMahon-like to me, especially if you pitched that to him, he would run with it to the hill. But I just, uh-huh. for real, <laughs> oh, God, it can turn tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> But it's all that stuff is ridiculous. But getting rid of getting rid of Bray Wyatt is ridiculous too. So mm-hmm. we'll see, man. It's 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 it, they have a very long history of. It doesn't matter how over you are, how much we sell that bull mess about getting yourself over. If you're not who we want, sell all the t-shirts you want. Uh, who cares? The main thing with that is because that's always been the thing as people's mm-hmm. big thing is like, but the merchandise sales and the merchandise as we were talking earlier about Amazon's return policy. Yeah. WWE's the exact same fucking thing. WWE makes their money in the stock market and with their corporate TV deals. They don't give a good goddamn about t-shirts. They just don't want anyone else to have that money. That's where their mm-hmm. deals still are what they are. If WWE was smart, as soon as you make the sale to Fox, you would go in and renegotiate everybody's contracts and they would be making 70, 75% off of their t-shirt sales. Not you, the performer. And if you're real fucking smart, you would give them all of it. How many people do you think you would lose to AEW if they got all their merch sales? But they don't because you want it. You don't need it, clearly, because you just fired Bray Wyatt who was selling t-shirts hand over fist. So it doesn't matter to you that they sell. You just don't want the other guy to have it. And that's what's going to wind up fucking you because of all this bullshit little nickel and dime garbage for money you don't even need. You are still not in the stratosphere as that of that guy in Jacksonville. So you can't keep up with that guy. What's Cornette talking about? If someone had asked him, do you think Vince will cut CM Punk a check to, to not show up at the, at the AEW show? And he was like, yeah, Vince would do it, but I don't think Punk would take it. And they keep having that conversation and going down the wormhole and discussing it. And it basically turns into the iron sheet breaking Hogan's legs and all, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And he's explaining why things like that don't happen anymore and how stuff like that. It's just not like that anymore. But, you know, maybe, I mean, if Punk's like, hey, Vince, slap me $100,000, man. I'll just uh, forget I have a plane ticket here. And all I can figure is there's several things I'm thinking of here. If Tony Khan doesn't have your name on a piece of paper, he's not going to promote it anyway. He can't possibly be that stupid. Wouldn't have any money if he was that stupid. That's the first thing. Second thing that jumped out to me about that is this: a hundred grand. Do you, That's do you, all it would take. Do you really <laughs> think Punk would fuck somebody like that for a hundred grand? I got bad news for you. 
I know you know who Colt Cabana is, Jim. You talk shit about him all the time. You do know that story about what went down between the two of them, right? Oh, yes. Okay, so that means CM Punk knows about court cost. Mm-hmm. There's no way, and that's the whole deal. Stop dropping this, the bucket. <laughs> yeah, all this talk, all this talk about him, you know, running out on running out on what on the contract? Because if there ain't no contract, you can't stiff the guy. And if there is a contract, you better not stiff the guy. Because like we said, man, Vince and WWE have a lot of lawyers. I fucking promise you, Tony and Shad Khan have more, and they have higher priced lawyers too. So it's like you you're not going to do that. And that's the whole point is. It wouldn't be Vince anyway. It would be Phil. I'm quite certain that, quite certain that that's not something that's going to happen. I just and and mainly not even because you know he wouldn't do it or is not interested or blah blah blah. It's just like I don't think that we would be hearing as much talk about this bullshit if contracts hadn't already been signed. I just I just don't. But none yeah. of that stuff is none of that's as important to me. I'm excited because it helps the helps them as a company, but it's uh the. Adam Cole thing is I would love if that went down that would be so awesome but it's weird because you get all that stuff about well Vince McMahon he had a closed door sit down meeting with Adam Cole he was negotiating with Adam Cole straight away and that means that Bebe's gonna stay and I'm like well yeah maybe when they had the conversation 24 hours before they fucking fire his buddy Bobby Fish might have yeah. helped a little bit better to hold on to that guy. No fucking reason mm-hmm. to get rid of Fish, man. I know Fish doesn't work as much as he used to, but I mean, that's the point. Again, it's got nothing to do with any of that stuff, man. It just has to do with clearing the decks and wiping out as much money as you can so that when you sell, you, you maximize what you're selling. I really think that's what they're doing. I kind of hope it's what they're doing. And uh, for anyone that still wants to be in the rest of the business, there's lots of places to land. I just don't, I'm not feeling that bloat thing. AEW's roster's getting bloated. They got lots of TV hours to front to fill. They got more YouTube time than they'll ever know what to do with. It's not a problem, man. Everything's going to be okay. Speaking of which, that was something Marty DeRosa had hatched his little plot this week about. I'm not sure. It seems to me like he was saying that this is not, this is no rumors, no, nothing in the wind, just gut feeling, just something I, I think. I think that's what he said. But his whole thing about um, – did you listen to him this week? I've, I've listened to him. Excellent. It was his thing about um, Jeff Jarrett and Conrad Thompson. By oh, the NWA I, I was going to ask you about that. That's about fascinating. That. That's I fascinating. He's on to something. <laughs> That's fascinating. I hope they're right. But I will yeah. say the, the whole part about um, – I don't think it was them, but I don't remember anybody else talking about it. But the discussion was about I, I, this. Seems like it was Cornette and last. I think they were talking about Cody's retirement speech and stuff like that. And I, I might have this wrong, but somebody was talking about, well, you know, you buy Cody Rhodes out of his contract with AEW, and he goes to the NWA to win that title. And I was like, he did make that reference to the title that his old man. I, it would not surprise me a bit. But why would he have to be out of his AEW contract to do that? So I mean, yeah. NWA yeah. Women's Champ has been on AEW TV a lot, a lot. It's like, no, nah, man, I'd love the idea of Cody going to the NWA and winning yeah. that championship. That would be fucking sick. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I thought my thing was going crazy. Dad, damn it, it's like elbow on my shelf. But I, yeah, good. all this crossover stuff is just cool as hell. I love it. I love it. So, yeah. Yeah. but that idea is dope. I really. My biggest NWA AEW crossover that I still want to see, just just for one time off, you don't have to like have a program or nothing, just have them wrestle each other. Is I would love to see Christian wrestle Nick Aldis because mm-hmm. it was during it was Impact, but it was when Impact still had the NWA Championship. Christian had that sucker. That was when Captain Charisma went down there and bet on himself in the greatest game of personal roulette that no one ever talks about anymore. Man, Christian Cage was a monster star in TNA. I still hate saying that, but it was at the time that in impact when Christian went to impact and did the captain charisma thing with Tyson Tomko and all that, he was awesome. He was over his shit. And it's like, I would love to see him and Nick Aldis wrestle. I, th- I want Nick to retain it. Cause I want Cody to beat him for it. But I love that. Like we talked about, you know, I still want that NWA TV title to wind up on. I want that to be AEW's TV title. But yeah, Cody in the NWA. Hell yeah, go right ahead, man. And that's only if he wants to stick around. Because I just, 
I mean, Cody's going to retire? You and I have talked about that on here before, man. Cody is not long for this shit. He don't, he don't want to do this forever. Like the Bucks, I was watching an interview with the Bucks the other day from, I think, three years ago, and they're all like, man, I don't want to be – Nick was like, I don't want to be doing this in 15 years, and Matt's like, I'll be retired in eight. And I'm like, that's before you got the TNT win to fall. It's like mm-hmm. – Hey, that's what AEW is up to, man. This notion of those go, oh, their executive vice presidents just going down there to put themselves over. I don't think any of them are doing. I really don't think any of them are doing that. I don't. The guy that got his recent contract to keep himself over forever is Randy Orton. That's that's what that guy did. That guy negotiated to be on top forever, and no one ever calls him out about it. No one ever says anything about it. People still act like Randy Orton's twenty five years old, but he ain't. But nah, I think that those dudes got inside. I just, I just think that they're setting this stuff up to shut it down, and then you can come back, and it's basically like guys in New Japan, where once you hit 50 and you want to come back for once a year and have, like, super mega god star who can still perform because they haven't been breaking themselves in half for 10 years, why not? That's It's cool. I, I really like it. I like the feel of it, and, but it's another good reason to just stockpile all that shit because, like, you know, I've talked about, man, you're not going to have to, with all the factions in AEW, you're not going to have to factor inner circle in for much longer. There's not going to be one. <laughs> and it'll be the same thing. With Well, it'll always start with the executive VPs and the top five. Not really. I just don't think that's the case. There's a reason that Hangman Page has been, you know, given that nice shove. And it's cool. It's cool. All that stuff feels real cool. It's quite enjoyable and fun. Heck yeah, man. And Alistair Black works there. How can I not be happy about that? I ask, that, that hurts nothing. I guess I should. <laughs> it's the whole idea of, you know, uh, Cody uh, going through the NWA I like, but the the scenario that was being proposed, that, but I don't, I don't see why that means Billy has to be selling. You know, Jeff, could just come, could come work for me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm good either way. I feel bad for Billy. I loved what he did. The guy obviously cared and did really good. And people are weird about well, you know, they had that press conference where nobody showed up. I'm like, dude, y'all do realize that the Delta variant got fired up in some places quicker than others, right? I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if it was wrong with people. But if Billy wants out, great. Billy wants to stay in, that's great too. But um, I do think that uh, Conrad, I would love to see Conrad own the NWA because it'd be very, very funny. You will find out, I think, you will find out real goddamn quick the people that are still kind of hanging around hoping that maybe uh, Vinny will cut me one more paycheck because they will not associate with Conrad Thompson ever the fuck again if he winds up owning the NWA. I just think I just think that'd be great. Let's do it. Yeah, man. That's what's that. I like the idea of watching the NWA show on uh, YouTube with commercials for yeah. yeah, man. I do mortgages. <laughs> hey, y'all, I'm kind of going to talk to you. I like mortgages. <laughs> do I love mortgages. <laughs> That's awesome, man. <laughs> Every impersonation I ever do is. <laughs> <laughs> I know what we should do. Hey, it's Conrad Thompson. And hey, hey, do I love mortgages? <laughs> yeah, there we go. There's a little hey, hey in there. <laughs> Heck yeah, man. That's what's going down. That is exactly what's I think that's everything. I apologize for being so jumbled, but it was a good call, man. I appreciate it, dude. Yeah, cool, man. I'll see y'all. Thanks for watching, y'all. All righty. Bye.